Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor has been one of the most progressive members of the court, but now a progressive wants her to retire ASAP. That progressive being Mehdi Hassan, who writes a new column in The Guardian calling on her to retire before it's too late in case President Biden is replaced by Donald Trump come this fall. What do you make of this, Brianna? This is really extraordinary. So you can tell that Mehdi Hassan knows he's going to get a lot of blowback for this article, and it is There's so much up throat, the wazoo. throat clearing in here. <laughs> it's really incredible. You have to scroll down almost halfway through the article <laughs> to start to hear him make an affirmative case for why. So largely this seems to be rooted in the idea that because she has type 1 diabetes and because she is the only Supreme Court justice to have traveled with a medic, reportedly, that there might be concern, some, some concerns about her health. There was a Bloomberg piece out um, last month, about two weeks ago, uh, pointing out that she's described how tired she is at recent events. Uh, but she's also only 69 years old, uh, turning 70 shortly. Very she doesn't useful have, compared to our Compared to some of the other, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. the other justices as well. This isn't a case um, like uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who had long suffered from pancreatic cancer, one of the more um, lethal, uh, deadly kinds of cancer there are. I mean, many people live long lives, as she has done so far with type 1 diabetes. So I do think that there is probably more of a case that he's being alarmist here than in other instances. But of course, you never know. And I do think in many ways, him writing this piece is a expression of how deeply concerned liberals are about how unlikely it is that Joe Biden's going to be able to stay in office. Yes, that's looking at the polling. Uh, I guess we, sh we should note... Um I think the, the picture, it's not continued to get worse for Biden. Um, obviously, the national polling is still pretty bad. The swing states are now mostly within five points or closer. Um, Pennsylvania, much closer than that. I think it's like a one or two point margin, depending on which polls you look at. Michigan, similar. Arizona, similar. So it's not, you know, if, if the Biden reelection effort has been derailed, it's not, it's not gone, it's, it's not gone even further off the tracks. It's not... Uh, um, the, the train has not rolled on yeah, its side, sure. um, but yes, Donald Trump still ahead of Biden by any objective measure at this time. And it's funny because Donald Trump is already a, he appointed three Supreme Court justices during his four years in office, right? And I'm doing that calculation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Kavanaugh, so Gorsuch, and uh, and um, who am I missing? And uh, and uh, oh, and Bar Amy Bar Coney, oh, Amy, yeah. Amy Coney Barrett. So he's he's uh, he's already reshaped the court very much in the conservative direction if he was able to appoint a Sonia Sotomayor replacement in the event that she could not continue on for medical reasons, that would be uh, almost half the entire court. Right. So Mehdi, perhaps because he is the king of argument, has built in all of the counter arguments into this piece uh, already. So he raises the question that people might be having, won't any replacement for Sotomayor be to her right as she is one of the more left-leaning people on the bench? He, uh, don't they, wouldn't whoever gets nominated in her stead have to be um, satisfactory to Joe Manchin and therefore be less progressive and more centrist than Sotomayor? Mehdi's answer to that is perhaps, but again, consider the alternative would be rather Biden replace Sotomayor with a centrist in 2024 or Trump replace her with a far right Federalist Society goon in 2025. You know, and it's worth noting that part of the discourse around Obama's failed appointment was, it's, it did, was there not enough of a kind of public backlash against Republican obstruction because he had picked a centrist, that he was already trying to play this game, picking another centrist white male candidate that might not have galvanized the public and made the Republicans afraid of obstructing him the way it might have happened if he had made a more of a historic pick. Whatever you think about the value of identity politics, I don't think that you can argue that it doesn't mobilize people and that it, it doesn't resonate with people. Um, and he also asked, many asked, you know, is there going to be backlash because Sotomayor is such a historic pick herself? First, um, Latino justice, only Latino ju Latina justice, one of very few female justices. You know, is this a little different than the retire Breyer argument? Um, because, and frankly, the uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg argument, because one, she's not actively sick and struggling with a, you know, a, a deadly illness, and two, is unique 
uh, both in terms of her politics and her mm. uh, kind of identity on the bench. Yeah, I was just looking again for a refresher. It is so fascinating how because it just plays a role. It's when the person decides to retire or gets yeah. too old. It's like Biden has just done one appointment so far in this first term. Trump got to do three in one term as president. Um, uh, Barack Obama got two. For, he was president for eight years. He got two. Uh, George W. Bush was president for eight years. He got two. Bill Clinton got two during his eight years. George H. W. Bush got um, got two. Well, now one of them ended up being David Souter, who ended up being a liberal. There was actually a long history for a while of Republicans, uh, conservatives. This is what, frankly, frustrated the conservative movement and yeah. helped give rise to the Federalist Society and the concerted effort to make sure that the people end up on the court are actual conservatives, is that Republicans, um, Reagan and Nixon in particular, appointed so many, and Eisenhower, so many ostensibly Republican support, uh, Supreme Court justices who then ended up not governing in conservative ways at all. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument that exposure to and knowledge and awareness and, and time practice really? leads you in a liberal direction. I mean, that's part of what the conservative attack on college campuses has always been about. The exposure to different ideas and different kinds of people does lead more in a more liberal, tolerant uh, direction. But I also think it's worth noting, I think it was um, Senator White, uh, Whitehead who did this, uh, White House rather, who did this uh, analysis some years ago. Um, He's been really involved in uh, Supreme Court reform and uh, pushing back against this um, Federalist Society conservative-led effort to take over the courts. Um, and I think the, the Intercept also did some research into this back during my time there. When you evaluate when federal judges step down or go on senior status, Republicans do, a so, do it much more strategically than Democrats do. And that's part of why you've gotten mm -hmm. this asymmetry, uh, asymmetry in the federal courts over the years. Democrats retire when they feel like it, when it's convenient for them, when they want to go on a Alaskan cruise with their family. Republicans strategically retire when a Republican is in office. And you can go on senior status, and it's the time at which, you, and, and still continue to take cases just in a, in a lower volume. And the time at which you go on senior status is the time at which your replacement is picked. So if you're not really ready, there's a kind of middle ground road you can mm. take. And many, many, many more Republican judges take it than Democrats. So we've just been getting, we, Democrats have been getting really outplayed in that way for years. And so this Medi article might be sort of responding to that saying, okay, this is at a higher level than most of the instances that we've been talking about historically. But, and it might seem really premature, but how stupid are you going to feel, Democrats, if, God forbid, something does happen to Sotomayor in the next four years? Mm. Very interesting. Well, we'll have to see. We'll continue to follow this. More rising in just a minute.